Being a very successful game developer and publisher can be due to many factors, such as ambition, creativity, and passion. But these factors are only achievable by well-established studios with talented artists and having access to the best software and tools available or developing custom tools when necessary. Blizzard Entertainment is a prime example when it comes to this, because they have under their belt many successful AAA video games such as the World of Warcraft, Diablo series, Starcraft series, Overwatch, and the well-known Warcraft series. At Blizzard, we don't just make games, we build worlds. We are a whole ecosystem of different departments. We have designers, sure, but we also have producers, we have artists, we have quality assurance, but that's not even the end of the list. All of that makes Blizzard's games amazing, but that's more than just design. That's the Blizzard team. To know exactly what kind of tools Blizzard Entertainment uses when working on their video game projects, you need to gather all available data from across the web whether it be by looking at some behind-the-scenes footage or surfing many forums and articles, as Blizzard is not that open to what 3D software and tools they use in their video games. I'm ready. I gotcha. Character modeling is a very essential process that requires the work of a handful yet carefully selected artists. Generally speaking, Blizzard primarily uses Maya, 3ds Max, and ZBrush in addition to their own proprietary tools for modeling and sculpting. Whereas for texturing the models, they use Substance Painter and Mari. These software are widely used on all their video game projects, knowing that these are exactly industry standard software that provide the latest features and tools that can act as a strong building block for their video game pipelines. And this allows them to enhance the workflow and make better games. To be honest, this is expected to say the least, especially for making giant titles such as the World of Warcraft and Overwatch. Though it is worth mentioning that during the development of Warcraft 3 Reforged, Blizzard artists had to transfer the original work done in 3ds Max into Maya for doing rework, but that did not go smoothly as artists encountered issues in scaling their models properly to fit the world. It goes to show that using multiple software and different versions has its own pros and cons that must be taken into consideration. What? would their training regime look like? It's really hard to say because it really depends on the, the job they're aiming for. Let's say an environment artist. What do I need to learn? Okay, I need to learn ZBrush. I need to learn Max or Maya. It doesn't really matter if it's Max or Maya. Um, or Blender, no, sorry. <laughs> Blizzard video games, without a doubt, have some of the most beautiful environments that you can find in any video game. For example, it's unique and compelling environments from games such as Diablo series and World of Warcraft, which some old school gamers believe that it has one of the most beautiful environments of all time. We are a big company with very successful products, which is very exciting, right? Because the work that we do is seen and appreciated by millions, but at the same time, scrutinized by millions. Furthermore, since Blizzard Entertainment is very conservative about their game engines and tools, the only accessible data I could find covers only the surface. Almost all of their video games use proprietary tools plus in-house game engines that are designed specifically for a modular level design. For instance, the MMORPG game World of Warcraft used the World of Warcraft editor, an editor made exclusively for the making of this game. Also, it is an editor that can make any video game artist's life much more easier. On the other hand, Overwatch developers used another exclusive world editor. As stated in an article on Overwatch news page, their game utilized TED. What is TED, you might ask? It is a game editor that acts as a visualizer to bridge the base code engine data to artists in the easiest way possible. It arranges and fine-tunes the overall level design and environments. The list goes on and on for other video games except for Hearthstone which officially stated that it used Unity as a game engine. Blizzard developers did not see the need to create a game engine knowing that Unity could deliver and suffice, in addition to the fact that the project was very small at that time. It is also worth mentioning that when I dive deeper into this topic, I encountered a forum speculating that StarCraft II and Heroes of the Storm share the same game engine. The speculation was amplified by a user's comment stating that he asked a Blizzard recruiter on Compass about it and he approved, adding that all video games had different game engines. The story drives us so quickly that oftentimes we just sketch and just doodle very quickly. 
It's really about coming with the best, best story. Once we have that, we start working on animation, creating models, and putting together a scene. Blizzard Entertainment brought to life many memorable characters and heroes and succeeded in doing so by having the finest artists and the use of industry standard software. Animating video game characters can be considered one of the hardest tasks in the video game development industry. You want to preserve the essence of your hero, but also kind of show that the heroes evolved and kind of changed and moved forward. So we have a lot more new looks. So I'm excited to see how players and fans react to all of the ones that we've done so far. In addition, the most frequent software that I encountered while browsing through many of Blizzard job listings is Maya. According to the behind-the-scenes footage that was released, we can see that Maya is understandably industry standard software for its spectacular animation tools that made it stand out. It is actually a must-have tool in animation for video games, such as animating characters from Heroes of the Storm and much more. The animation itself is done on something that looks like this. This is called the rig. My job is done by taking these different pieces and moving them around. So it's just like a puppet. I like to say I play with these 3D dolls all day. But the fun thing about our game is that we can adjust everything live. So I can show you an example. Let's say for some reason or another, I wanted to adjust this. I could go into the graph editor. If I turn this on and I select all this, this animation actually looks like that. It's a bunch of crafts. In another YouTube video titled, This is how Blizzard video games are made, we can notice the use of 3DS Max during the making process of Rise and Shine, the seventh animated short of Overwatch. It's the story and the characters and the breadth of those worlds that, that kind of makes them distinct. I, I've always believed that it creates a much deeper level of engagement, you know, beyond the, the gameplay specifically. It's the the realm of imagination that you step into that really makes people connect. It just breathes fresh air into the whole process of how we look at crafting our stories and just provides us with a whole new stable of editors and craftsmen that you know, really love these worlds like we do. Blizzard Entertainment has its watermark on the video game industry when it comes to creating stellar looking cinematics and all 3D enthusiasts aspire to achieve that level of quality which leaves artists wondering about the software and render engines involved in the making process of these breathtaking cinematics like the World of Warcraft, Diablo and Overwatch. A Blizzard developer from the cinematic department stated that originally Blizzard cinematics only used RenderMan and V-Ray, until they started slowly shifting towards implementing Redshift during the development of Overwatch into their pipeline. We wanted to introduce the world to a whole new universe animated shorts were one of the most exciting avenues that we had to tell a lot of story. These shorts are very important for Blizzard because all the players, especially the Blizzard fan base and all the people that weren't familiar with Blizzard's games, got emotionally connected to characters through the storytelling that we create. Till this day, Blizzard uses RenderMan solely on their characters and a combination of Redshift and Katana on environments and assets. When it comes to 3D software, the cinematics teams, according to what I found, uses a combination of 3ds Max and Maya for poly modeling and animation. But for creating characters, they also use ZBrush, which is the industry standard software for sculpting, especially characters. Not every one of these animated shorts is a bombastic combat piece with, you know, orcs and Protoss warring against each other. Let's get inside of a human being's head and really show their character and show their motivations and show a totally different emotional side of the storytelling capabilities of Blizzard. For editing cinematics videos, Blizzard used to use a software called Source Filmmaker, which is a powerful movie making tool. But lately, they used Premiere Pro to edit all their footage and produce the final cinematics products. When you're passionate, you strive, you want to test things, you want to like try different ideas and you invest a lot more time, you invest a lot more of yourself in it. So it makes sense that you have more results. I think a lot of us sense what's special about Blizzard in a lot of different ways. I think it's about the day-to-day -day life of working with one another. There's sort of this magic that exists in Blizzard pride and us being together as a group and making the things that we make and taking on the challenges of being Blizzard together that really have made us who we are. Being around passionate people just ignite you. The advice I would give to someone that wants to work here is work as hard as you can, put put all the past you can into your art, and show us that you that you love what you do. I'm nothing special. 
It just takes hard work and that's it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.